Hi everyone, I'm Delane Cleveland from CCX News. Now, hunger is always a significant thing in our community, but ever since the COVID-19 outbreak began, the need has more than doubled according to Second Harvest Heartland. So joining me now to talk more about that is Allison O'Toole, the CEO of Second Harvest Heartland via Skype. Thanks for joining us, Allison. Uh, maybe just we can start off by telling us what things are like or what things have been like over the past few weeks since the outbreak started. Yeah, well, like for so many of your viewers, it's been really hard. But I will tell you, I am talking with you as the very proud CEO of an organization that has sprung into action to, to help our community like no other. So Second Harvest Heartland obviously is your neighbor in Brooklyn Park, and our job is to help feed our hungry neighbors. We work with a network of wonderful food shelves and meal programs, and they are seeing the demand for help and the demand for food skyrocket. Um, we have seen the need increasing, the, the need increased immediately and exponentially about two weeks ago as decisions have been made that restrict our movement and restrict businesses we certainly applaud Governor Walls in making tough decisions, um, but some of those decisions, some of the results of those decisions have a huge impact on families, and that's why we are here to help. We stand with the governor, with this community, ready to help. Let me give you some specifics. So we have seen um, the need for just emergency food supply skyrocket. And so what we're trying to do, part of our response to this is to try and infuse the Hunger Relief Network with just more food. A lot of it is shelf stable. We're trying to shore up cupboards of hungry neighbors, just like we're shoring up our own. We're trying to add produce to that always. We're always trying to add fresh produce to that. And just to try and get that immediate um, food supply out into the community. The other thing we're seeing is... Um, double the number of calls about SNAP, which is the Supp Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps. This program, we strongly believe, is designed for situations like this. Crisis moments when families need a little extra help making ends meet. Um, and we have seen double the number of calls, double the number of applications, those are kind of tracking very closely with the number of unemployment insurance applications we're seeing. So our team is just in the highest gear ever. The final thing we're doing to respond is to try and help the community by providing more fresh prepared meals. We're doing that through a new initiative called Minnesota Central Kitchen, which is a partnership with Chow Girls and Loaves and Fishes with support of you know, the Bachelor Farmer, Restaurant Alma, many, many others to help use idle kitchens, idle teams from restaurants to prepare more meals to help loaves and fishes and, and uh, other partners meet their increasing need. I'm so happy to report that with that Minnesota Central Kitchen partnership, we are on track to provide 10,000 meals a day um, at this point with a couple of kitchens up and running. The added benefit of the Minnesota Central Kitchen is that it also puts people back to work who have been laid off or um, otherwise unemployed from some of the restaurants uh, closing operations in the time being. How appreciative have those people been that they're getting the opportunity to work at this time? I so appreciate it. It's hard for me to put it into words, frankly. It's also hard for me to put into words the need that we're seeing. It is sobering um, every single day to see the number of people who need help increase. And I know so many of our area food shelves are feeling that same, same way. They are really the front lines trying to figure out and trying to adjust their operations to work within the guidelines with social distancing and all of that. Um, and also just to try and get food safely um, into the hands and into those cupboards of the families that who need it most. I've been sitting in on these conference calls with the governor every day, the governor and other state officials. 
and they were talking about a lot of the people that may have extra time now because they're not working to to volunteer to donate to help out that way people sitting at home who are looking for ways to get back give back how can they help you guys at second harvest yeah so there's a couple of ways first and foremost financial donations we can leverage a dollar into three meals and so we're very efficient and that is the number one um, way to help us that is the most most useful way to help us we are opening up our volunteer shifts again we have uh, included now as we've opened up some safety measures um, including uh, social distancing requirements there is a questionnaire that you have to answer about your own health and well-being before you come in and you get your temperature temperature check that is to make sure that our volunteers are healthy and safe when they come into our operation but we are welcoming volunteers um, again all of that information is on twoharvest.org I'll tell you one other thing though, Delaney, if your um, viewers have a connection to a local food shelf, they need help too. And many, many organizations, um, including SEEP right in Brooklyn Park in our neighborhood, CAPI, um, they have needs that are really specific. Some around not only food, but also hygiene items. So if you go to those websites, you can find out specific needs of those local food chef shelves and really, um, you know, we're all in this together and whether you have a connection at the local level or for us who we distribute, um, you know, regionally in the state of Minnesota and Western Wisconsin, we all need help. Um, and the fastest way to do it is financially, of course, but there are a couple other ways too. One other question I thought of, what does volunteering look like in this age of social distancing? Have you figured that out yet, or is it still a work in progress? Well, the great, it's always a work in progress as we learn more every day, but, you know, the beauty of it is being a, a Brooklyn Park-based organization now, we have the room to allow for social distancing and to comply with, with those new restrictions. And so we feel really fortunate we are so lucky to be part of the Brooklyn Park community, um, but our new facility, our newly renovated facility allows for that. So we have no problem. Some of the smaller agencies have had to make hard decisions about their volunteer operations. We did two at a time. We're starting to get back up and running now, um, as are others as well. But we're perfectly safe, and we ask that healthy folks who are not showing symptoms of COVID-19 or the coronavirus um, and that don't have a temperature, haven't been otherwise exposed or traveled, are welcome to come in and help us meet this need by um, packing food boxes. I think that's probably all that I have. Are there any other points that you wanted to touch on that you think would be significant? We're just so grateful to the community. This community always steps up. We are in the most generous state in the country, and we've certainly felt that love um, as we proceeded um, through this crisis. This crisis is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So I just welcome continued help from this community and we really stand together again with the governor and state officials and this community in being ready to help where we need to. All right, Allison, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And for more information on how to help Second Harvest Heartland, you can go to our website at ccxmedia.org. Find more local news stories at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.